G'day and welcome back to my workbench. Well, look at the Sunderland. It's finished. <laughs> no, it's just a bit of a dry fit. Although I have got some paint on, so we can see what she starts to look like in white. And I have put a fact form canopy on. So that's quite nice. That's a bit better than the one Airfix provides, which is pretty cloudy. So from a distance, they're probably similar, but you really see nothing through the Airfix one. The, um, the vac form one is so much better. It, um, it's just a bit fiddly to put on there. So that's good. I work out a solution to improving this front turret because there's a heck of a drop down, like it, literally a huge ledge where it drops down to the slidey bit so it could be done. So I work out a way to adjust things and shim things and we get an improvement for that. And I've put a coat of paint on it so you can see it's starting to look quite nice. Sub assemblies, yeah, I've got lots of things already made up but they're not finished and ready for painting yet. Mainly I've been working on that interior. So I've got a few more things to show you on that interior that I've done. There's curtains in there. I have added some photo etch and the photo etch is over here and this coloured photo etch. I've started on it, but it proved to be a bit of a problem. But we'll talk more about that later. Yeah, photo etch is always a pain in the butt. In some ways, I wish I'd never bought it. But anyhow, it's all part of modelling. You know, usually it makes things look better. In this case, not so much. <laughs> Not so much at all. And of course, the pliosaur is here always for scale. 170 second scale plesiosaur. Yep. All right. Well, all of that to come in this video. We'll explore a lot of things. I'll show you mistakes in the instructions, how to fix them, how to fix that front turret. Lots of little tips and tricks. Does that sound interesting? I hope so. Okay, then. Let's roll the music. One annoying thing with this kit is this huge gap here around this truck because that's designed to slide in and out, which is all very well. But I only want mine to sit outside of there and I thought, well, I could putty it up, but it's such a huge big gap, you know, and it's quite horrible. And the step down is um, is ridiculous. That's just you know, absurd, very unaerodynamic. So, um why what can I do? I could fabricate this part, right? So I could take this part and I could sort of fabricate that curve across there. That wouldn't be that hard. And that would thicken it up a bit and that would fit. But then it'd be sort of wider in the space there and also it'd be much larger than the um, the canopy bit here for the um, machine gunner. So that would probably make the whole thing sort of start to look very silly. So I thought and I thought and then I had an idea. And what I have done, make my holes bigger, is I cut a bit of the plastic out here because it was about oh, quite thick before. Here's a photo. So it was that thick. So I shaved a bit out of there so that um, basically I can get my whole turret assembly up higher. And to get it up higher, I actually cut all the little flanges off the bottom here, which allow it to slide. Got rid of those and made myself a little horseshoe which I measured up from the bottom. Okay, and if I put that horseshoe underneath there, and if we can pop this in here, now it pretty well fits. There's a little bit of space on the side there, which I'll have to putty up, but it's a lot better than it was. And the step down, the step down is hardly anything. In fact, if I was to sort of pop it out a bit and position it there, so it's actually not in the hole, then my step down is pretty well imperceivable as it is on the rear aircraft. But uh, but sort of think about that, which way I should go, whether I'll just cement it in like that, putty around it or however. But anyhow, what I need to do now is this little horseshoe that I've made. It's uh, it's only sort of rough and dry fit. I like all of this. So um, I'll get the uh, cannon out, put that somewhere safe. Got this assembly. And what I'll do is we'll glue that in and then I will sand that back and cut it until it's absolutely smooth. Put a little bit of putty in and this whole part will be very easy to clean up and sand. See, if I tried to putty here, um, I'd be sort of sanding around here and I'd wreck things and oh, it'd, be, it'd be too difficult. It must look, it'd look horrible. Tons and tons of putty on the thing. So I think this is an elegant solution and it's a simple solution and I'm going with that. Now, on with the photo etch. Now, you get quite a lot here, but 
piece I'm going to work out is this back bracket goes behind the seats. Now, I don't know how much of this is going to be seen, but it's a large part. And I thought, I'll put on some of the larger parts and see how they go. Uh, this one is not coloured. There are other coloured parts in the photo etch. I'll talk about those later. Um, they prove pretty well useless. But um, this one, in the Italy kit, it comes standard. You have this whole frame. And there's quite a lot of space in the cockpit, so I thought, what the heck. Now, you've got to fold up the side, so that's really not that hard to do. As with all Edward's stuff, they're scored for you already, pre-scored, so you just find the score lines. It's a good idea to try and sort of hold the piece down on something hard, so I'm using the wooden block here. So I'm using my file in there, diamond file, blade under there, fold up. You can use a folding tool, but this is so tiny, I find folding tools wreck these little guys. So, you know, that's sort of done, that's folded up. That's not too bad. Okay, what it has also is it has a little backing piece. All right, um, that backing piece is actually at the front, so it's a fronty backy piece or whatever. You know, it's a piece. It's another fiddly little shitty bit of photo etch you got to cope with. All right, so cut that off there. Uh, gonna stick some glue on it. As you can see, I haven't even worried about tidying things up or anything because, quite frankly, this stuff is so small. Who cares? <laughs> and it's hardly going to be seen. So all I really want to do here is assemble this quickly. I've already done one so I know how to suffer my way through this. So that fits in there and that's actually at the front behind the chair. <laughs> and as you can see it takes a little bit of gluing, a couple of goes and eventually you'll get it in there Harry. Yes, squeeze it in there, you can do it. Ah, oh, photo etch, joy of it. Sometimes it really improves your model and it's a great thing to have. Most of the time it is just absolutely frustrating. So um, yeah. All right. So with that done, we now put a little bit of glue on the bottom here and get that ready to go inside the model. Now comes the tricky bit. Yep, freshen up my um, CA glue here. Slow zap. I keep it on the candle there because it actually lasts for ages. Now here's the interior that I built last time and I've added curtains since then. So if you have a close look when I get there. Bit of glue on the base. That's about the only part you glued. I tried gluing the little prong handles that stick out. Ah, none of that works. Slap a whole lot of glue on the base of this horrible little photo etch part. And then when you get to it, where you been, Harry? Did you nip out the room for a sec? No. And then that base, that's the part that's going to hold. So that's it. And tap her in, hold her in place, wait a little while, and she's done. So there you go. That's it. Photo etch behind the seats. Probably never be seen. Now I've been putting together as many sub-assemblies as I can. I even made up the wheels, although ultimately mine won't have that because it's probably going to go into a uh, diorama that's wet, you know, a seorama, a wetorama. Now, I'm not going to need this part open, right? This is um, the Bombay door here, okay? Which is where these guys sort of hang out. So if you leave that open, you can have your Bombay um, sort of racks there with the bombs on, they can slide in and out. Sort of, you know, fun little toy like thing. Talk more about that in a sec, but I'm not. I'm just going to have my bombs on the wings and they'll be fine there. So what I'm going to do is, as I've done on this side, I have already put that piece in and sealed up the hole, which you can do now, especially as I haven't glued the fuselage halves together. So this little piece here is just going to fit straight into there. There's a couple of little ledges on either side. They require some glue, and that's it. You could try and glue around the edge of it, but um, I found you didn't need to. It, uh, it sits nicely, and anyhow, you just end up with glue probably splattered on the um, on the fuselage, which is usually my trick. So, in there, and it fits in fairly well. I did find I had to sort of give a bit of pressure, just so it kept its curve. But that part's rather nice. In fact, it took little cleanup. Most of the parts are really good like that. They fit well. There's minimal cleanup. Oh, I need to just take a little bit of flash off the edge of that portal. There's little things you find. Generally, the, the kit's fairly good considering its age. Here's a little trick to get those round, because if you try and get in there and sand, you'll end up with some weird oblong shape. So I found something that is round, and luckily it had a tapered end. This is actually a scribing tool. So I can find sort of like, here's one here, that's got a tiny bit of flash there, right? So I can simply go in there, 
rotate this, the flash is fine, it's light, and it'll just basically disappear. It'll end up with a perfectly round hole. So any others here got flash? Not really. I mean this thing, the kit is pretty clean considering. So you know there's really not much to worry about. That one there's got a tiniest bit. So if I just give it a little rounding out, I've now got a perfectly round hole. So that's the trick if you've got a round hole and you need to sand it, find something that's round that's a sort of smaller or tapered like that. You can always put sandpaper on your round thing, especially if it's smaller, and then get in there. But um, yeah, it's a lot better than trying to put files in and you'll, you'll never get it perfect. Now another thing to look out for are these um, sliding bomb racks, as I said, that um, you know basically the idea is you could have those windows open that I've glued in and then your axe slide back and forth. This one's very stiff. But this one was covered in flash. This is like the exception of the rule with this kit. Most of the parts are sort of clean and it's just, you know, tiny bit of a touch up around the joins and away you go. These little racky things are bloody horrible. They're covered in flash everywhere, especially in the, um, so I can pull it off, in, uh, in the hole. It was all full of flash. But to get rid of that, I just simply put it on here and pushed it along. And I actually just pushed through the flash and away it went and then took it off and cleaned it up. Still cleaning this one up, but what I want to talk about is, well, we've got some injection points there we've got to get rid of. Okay, ejection points. But um, one of the main issues here is the instructions will tell you, you know, pretty obviously, slide the little thing on, right? Slide that on. Uh, don't glue it if you want it moving, okay? And then put your bombs on and then pop it in. And it'll show the flat end because this thing has a flat end and an open end. Now instructions want you to put the flat end in here, right? Which is absurd, that wouldn't work. The flat end obviously is there to stop this sliding off because if it did, You'd have this glued to your model, right? This glues to the aircraft. And you'd go, I'll put my bombs inside. They go all the way, fall off, fall inside, and be rattling around in there. And, you know, you've lost the effect and it's all ruined. And plus, if you put the, um, the flat end against here in the trough, it's going to sit proud. It sits too tall. Obviously, that is a mistake by Airfix. And you want to put in the end that doesn't have the little flat end on it, right? Doesn't have the little T-bar. And I'll need to clean off those um, ejection points because they're pushing it up too. But anyhow, that needs to go in there. The other thing to watch out for is they go long to the back. And I first I thought that was wrong as well. Because, I mean, I've built, um, you know, uh, the bow fighter with the rockets on and everything, and the long section goes on the front. Well, it does in that, in that the long section of the holder is for rockets in the bow fighter. So they're to keep it guided as they go out. These are bombs. Long section with this one does go to the back. Well, what a difference a coat of paint makes. I really was just going to paint up the interior, get the base color green in there. But while I was at it, I went, I'm having a good run here for a change. The airbrush wasn't clogging. And I didn't bother using my cordless. I just went with a compressor and my um, Revolution with a 0.5 needle, wax and style resin, away I went. So, what I want to know is how much we're going to see of that interior once we've got some color in there. And as you can see, it is very dark. Admittedly, there'll be some pilots in there and I'll paint a few things. So the photo etch that's going to go in here, well, the sticky stuff, this is supposed to be self-adhesive, right? And they're already pre-painted, which is all very lovely. And I thought, oh, those will be good. You know, that, that's an instant interior. That'll get me the uh, interior detail without too much work. And it seems like a great idea. But um, it had stuck to its backing paper, right? And what's sticky on there is useless, but it's enough to be annoying. So I'm going to have to clean this whole thing off with alcohol before I can start using these silly things. They're for the side panels, but this was designed for the Italeri kit. And the Evix kit is not the same shape. So a um, few things I'm going to have to do. I'm probably going to have to cut these panels or jig them to fit in the sides because... Our sides are straight level, whereas they've got a curve to the front. So that doesn't work. The dash, well, the dash part for Airfix is a totally different shape. Yep, so those and this do not match. So, you know, 
<laughs> it's it's not going to go well. It's not going to go well. So my choice here is to either make a uh, a new plastic part for the dash, or to use this one, but just sort of cut it down to suit that, which is probably what I'll do, because it's just nothing nothing matches up. It's hopeless. So the um, the photo H from uh, Edward, well, really fine if you've got the Edelary kit, I suppose, and this is not much different to the one for the Super Super Hobby kit, but it doesn't fit the Airfix kit, so a lot of it's a waste. There is a center console there that I've got to scratch up and make. There's all these things I've got to do, but unfortunately my week's got away from me. I'm not going to get them done for this video. At least I've got a coat of white paint on so we can see where she's going. What I might do is I might just cut out the um, fat form canopy and see how that looks. Now I am not a fan of vac form. I've ruined so many of them over the years. We used to have to put them on the um, balsa wood aircraft. They used to make them on some flu. They were a lot bigger though, so you could sort of get away with a few mistakes. But anyhow, that's the canopy from, I don't even know what make this is, it doesn't even say. Came with the kit, somebody had already bought it. And there's the airfix plastic part inside. So we're sort of, yeah, it's looking, looking about right. So we'll give it a try. It has the um, various panels marked down on it, so that's rather good. So that'll make it useful. And I'm going to have to replace the one on the front turret because I notice there's a massive big crack in that. So I'm going to have to use these. So without further ado, got my sharp scissors. Let's um, let's rough cut it. And then let's see if we can cut a nice straight edge along here. Now that's close, this is as close as I'm going to go on this video because I'm not going to cut this perfectly on camera. I just want to get a feeling for this. Now, this seems to have a little region here, a little step down. So I think that's designed to go underneath the, um, the plastic and maybe this is designed to pop up into there. We'll see. So I'm going to do a bit of a test now, see if that actually fits inside the model and pops up, which would be rather good. Then I wouldn't have to worry about these little edge pieces cutting them away. I'm hoping that is the solution. Well, surprise, surprise, you can see quite a lot through the vac form. And I did have to put it on the outside. I did have to trim it, and it's not a perfect job. I don't know how you get them perfect. I'll get it as close as I can, but I'll use white wood glue in there. I think that kind of hide all mistakes. But just to show you I'm not cheating, right, exactly the same lighting, exact the same position, Take the same camera. Okay, so there's your um, airfix part. And it's not bad, but it's thick. Okay. And then there is your... There's your vac form part. Pretty bit tricky to do. It's clearer. And you can certainly... I mean, you can see blobby things with the airfix one. With that, you definitely can see inside. It's still going to be dark in there. Unless I was to light it, it's still going to be very dark. So that's your choice. I'll um, persevere with the um, back form. The biggest problem you've got is the thickness of the Airfix edges. They're really apparent. Like when you put the Airfix one on, because it's so thick, it kind of hides everything, okay? You'll kind of get away with it, especially with the coat of paint. But the vac form one is going to show everything. So that edge is going to have to be a lot more perfect. And I'm going to have to do the same trick that I did at the front when I did um, this thing, is thin that out. So they're things for another video. And sorry I didn't get to the cannons. They'll be in the next video. But that's about all I've got time for. So look, I hope you've enjoyed it. And, um, and I hope you'll sort of hit those buttons on the bottom of the screen, you know, like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. And if you really want to help me out, you can... Buy me a curry. Yes, that really helps. That money goes directly to me. Doesn't all get stolen by, you know, those people at um, <coughs> YouTube. <coughs> Anyhow, 
that's it for this video. We'll continue on next time. I will get into that photo etch and try and figure out the solutions to the problems because it just doesn't fit. So I'm only going to use a little bit of it. Plus, as you can see, you don't really see much of the sides in it. I'll put in what shows. I'll get those pilots painted up. There'll be quite a lot more. I'll get um, yeah, I'll get the barrels on the um, on the guns and I'll get them all painted up. And we'll, we'll probably start actually doing some real assembly, buttoning up the hull. Oh, there's just so much that can be done. Hull? Hull? Yes, well, it is. It's the hull. It's the ship. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. It's goodbye from Australia. And it's hooroo from Harry Udini.